in this message, I hope to give you that right perspective by discussing with you the story of Uzzah. Now, Uzzah was the gentleman in the Bible who was traveling with King David to transport the ark along with some other men. The problem was they were transporting it wrong. So when the road they were on got bumpy, the ark started to shake back and forth. Uzzah reached up to grab the ark to prevent it from falling. Now, as we read that, it seems like the right thing to do. I mean, that would only be human instinct to grab something that's going to fall, right? Well, it goes deeper than that. When Uzzah touched the ark, God struck him dead right then and there, which from the outside looking in seems pretty harsh. Or is it? I guess it depends on from what perspective you look at it at. So I'm going to explain that to you. But again, I'm also going to relate it to our walk with the Lord today and how important it is for us as believers to remember that our body is holy and it houses the spirit of the living God. So we're going to go over that. I hope this message blesses you and touches you. Also, I wanted to remind you to please share these videos all over social media. I am having real problems here. I've had numerous people contact me who have been unsubscribed from my YouTube channel. One gentleman in particular resubscribed and only a day and a half later, he was unsubscribed again. I contacted my YouTube partner. He said it's a bug in the system. I don't know, but help get the message out. Also, I am mostly 100% viewer supported, so I do rely on your gifts to this ministry in order to continue bringing you the truth as often as I do. Um, donations have been way down still for many months now. So please consider if the Lord is moving you to help support what I'm doing here on YouTube. I do have a business PayPal and I have a PO box if you prefer check or money order. You can do it that way. All of the information is posted in the video description right below this video and also in the comments. So thank you in advance and God bless those of you who have been sowing into this ministry. I really appreciate your love, your prayers, and your support. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this message. God bless all of you. And I hope this message is a real blessing and helps you understand the importance of your walk with the Lord and being holy and obedient. First, I'm going to discuss this article you see here on the screen. The death of Uzzah was God unfair. Now, this article is going to focus on why he dropped dead and about God being unfair. However, I'm going to lead us in a slightly different direction, but I want to share this with you. It's very important. Uzzah's death for touching the ark leads some to characterize God as unfeeling and unfair. Why did Uzzah die? And what can we learn from this example? Then they quote Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Now, it begins here stating that the circumstances resulting in Uzzah's death are recorded in 1 Chronicles 13, 1 through 14. King David had decided to bring the Ark of the Covenant from Kirjath Jerim to Jerusalem, a distance of about 10 miles, and he had a new ox cart built to carry it. As they traveled toward Jerusalem, the oxen stumbled. Uzzah, who was walking next to the cart, put out his hand to steady the ark from falling. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and he struck him because he put his hand to the ark, and he died there before God. First Chronicles 13.10 Just as the article says, it seems like an automatic reaction on the part of Uzzah, but God regarded his actions as so serious that he struck him down dead. And it really does. I mean, if something starts to fall, it's almost like a reflex to grab for it or to try to jump to catch it. Why did God kill Uzzah? Was God being overly harsh and unkind? Disobeying God's instructions. 
This incident is an example of people disregarding God's instructions and doing what was right in their own eyes. God had given clear instructions about how the ark should have been carried. In Exodus 25, 14 through 15 and Deuteronomy 10, 8, we see that the ark was equipped with poles to be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. Number 7, 9 adds that this group of Levites, the sons of Kohath, would not use carts because theirs was the service of the holy things, which they carried on their shoulders. And while carrying the holy things, God clearly warned the Levites that they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. Numbers 4.15 emphasis added throughout. Both David and Uzzah forgot or disregarded these instructions. The parallel account 2 Samuel 6, 6 6-7 states that Uzzah took hold of it. And God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. The word error is rendered irreverence in the margin of the New King James Version and rashness in the King James Version. If God had compromised his holiness by overlooking Uzzah's and David's lack of care and respect, people could understandably conclude that his holiness was not that big of an issue and begin to treat God with disrespect in other ways. By showing his seriousness, God sought to protect the people from making that destructive mistake. God expected the people to treat the ark with the greatest respect. In one incident, a number of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh were killed for profaning the ark. 1 Samuel 6.19 Whatever God designates as holy should be revered, esteemed, and honored, including God's Sabbath and holy days, Leviticus 23. So now we see how they disobeyed God's specific instructions and why this was so important to follow the instructions that God had given regarding the ark. Now David recognizes his mistake. Initially, David became angry at Uzzah's death. The Kiel and Dulich commentary on the Old Testament explains the burning of David's anger was not directed against God, but referred to the calamity which had befallen Uzzah, or speaking more correctly, to the cause of this calamity, which David attributed to himself or to his undertaking. As he had not only resolved upon the removal of the ark, but had also planned the way in which it should be taken to Jerusalem, he could not trace the occasion of Uzzah's death to any other cause than his own plans. So David was upset because he blamed himself for the death of Uzzah. After David's initial confusion, he realized he had acted contrary to God's clear instructions about how to transport the ark. In 1 Chronicles 15, 2, we read, Then David said, No one may carry the ark of God but the Levites, for the Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of God and to minister before him forever. At this point, David understood that the ark was to be carried with poles on the shoulders of the Levites, just as God had commanded Moses in 1 Chronicles 15, 15. Next, the priest and Levites sanctified themselves in preparation to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. When they carefully followed God's instructions, they were able to bring up the ark with joy, and they successfully completed the journey without any further mishap. What a difference from their first attempt. So what are some lessons for us out of all of this? Well, first, many scriptures show that God is not harsh, cruel, and vindictive. Rather, God is love, and he was willing to sacrifice his son, Jesus Christ, so that all people may have the opportunity to inherit eternal life in his kingdom, 1 Timothy 2.4 and 2 Peter 3.9. God always acts for the ultimate good of people. Another far-reaching principle is that we must act in accordance with the will of God, do exactly as God instructs. When we begin to use our own reasoning or diminish his instructions, the consequences will be serious. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Number three, 
Even though our actions may be well-intentioned, the outcome may be serious if our decisions are contrary to God's commands. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 14.12 Finally, consider these reflections from the Expositor's Bible Commentary. The sad story of Uzzah's fatal attempt to study the Ark of God is a painful lesson underscoring the necessity of doing what is right in God's eyes, not our own eyes. The tendency to do what seems good in our eyes is at the heart of human rebellion against the authority of God. Similarly, today too often the standard of determining what is good is approached from the vantage point of our own personal opinion or what is right in our eyes rather than through the lens of biblical principles. Yet, as the incident with Uzzah shows, what is right in our eyes is irrelevant and frequently disastrous. Now I'm going to go ahead and share with you a Facebook post that I made the other day and give you that other perspective I mentioned that I would tell you about in regards to Uzzah and the Ark and Uzzah being struck dead it has a lot to do with our walk with the Lord and how we are supposed to live our lives. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you right now. Be blessed. So now I want to conclude this video. I told you I was going to be going a different direction. You can see the little note on my screen. This is a post I made the other night on Facebook. It says, Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was moody. Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was dead. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And isn't that so true? It talks about all these different famous biblical figures, shortcomings, and imperfections. My favorite one there is... Uh, Lazarus was dead. And of course, we know that Lazarus was called by Jesus because Jesus called him from the dead unto life. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. So this picture post I made last night started out as just that. But then the Lord kind of gave me some words as I wrote, and I'm going to skip a chunk of it because some of it is what I've already shared with you about the whole situation with the Ark of the Covenant. So I wrote, isn't God awesome? He takes the unworthy, the unrighteous, the imperfect, and the flawed, sends his only son Jesus to save a filthy, corrupt, and unworthy people. Then he reaches down and lifts us out of the dirt and filth, cleans us off, and makes us brand new. But he doesn't stop there. He uses us for his glory, takes us in, and calls us his own. Yet, oftentimes, we fight him tooth and nail just to go back to the filth in which we were rescued from. Do you think we frustrate God from time to time? Yet he puts up with us anyways. What a great God who, for whatever reason, truly loves us. Proverbs 26.11 says, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. In other words, a fool makes the same mistake again, goes right back to doing what he did wrong to begin with. Food for thought. Let's follow Jesus Christ, stand firm upon the truth, and no more be dogs or fools. Remember where we've been only as a reminder to move forward and not go back from the corruption and misery in which we were so graciously rescued. I am reminded of the Israelites when Moses, under the direction and authority of God, led them out of their captivity from Egypt. They were so happy at first, but then when the going got a bit tough, they murmured and complained, desiring to go back to their lives of bondage under the wicked Pharaoh. Do we really want to go back to the bondage of the wicked Pharaoh in our lives, Satan? You may be going through some struggles and you may be ready to call it quits. But let me remind you, just as God was there for an unworthy and unappreciative people in the fire to light their way at night, and a pillar of cloud to guide them by day, how much more is he there for you when he lives and dwells inside of you? You see, they eventually carried God's spirit around in the Ark of the Covenant. 
The ark was so powerful and holy, it had to be handled very carefully, and there were strict handling instructions. If the handling instructions given by God were not adhered to, you could surely die, just as Uzzah did when he was traveling with King David in 1 Chronicles 13, 1 through 14. Now, I already shared all this with you about that situation. We just went over that. So what is the main theme here? Well, the main theme here is obey God. When we disobey God, there are unfortunately consequences. Even though he will forgive us when we repent, there will be consequences in the flesh. Sometimes he gives extra mercy and releases us from some physical consequences, but not always. You're probably wondering, Lynn, what the heck is your point already? If you are a born again believer in Christ, your body is that ark today. You house the spirit of the living God. The ark was respected and even feared. Do you not realize your body is the ark of the covenant today? If the ark had to be handled very carefully, how much more should we as believers in Christ Jesus submit our bodies to him? If mishandling the ark led to death in the Old Testament, what will mishandling our temple or ark do to us spiritually today? That being said, let us completely trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and do not depend upon our own comprehension of things. Consider him in all of our ways and he will direct our paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. 1 Peter 1, 16, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Treat your temple ark with respect unto God because you have given it to him as his dwelling place. Finally, let us not be like the dog returning to its own vomit. We are not fools. We are children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Get ready for battle and put on your armor. Fight the good fight. Our joy is in the Lord and our redemption draws near. And remember, no matter what filth pit you were rescued from, God has washed you clean and he loves you very, very much. Be blessed. So that was the post I made just the other night on Facebook, and it goes with what I'm sharing with you. Your body is just like the Ark of the Covenant. Now, here's something interesting that we had read earlier that the high priest or the Levites were the only ones allowed to be touching the Ark, carrying the Ark, and so forth. We know that Jesus Christ is our high priest, and we have the Holy Spirit living within us. So you see, Jesus stands in between us and God, but the blood of Jesus is what makes us clean enough to be able to communicate with God, to be able to be forgiven. Do you see what I'm saying? So the high priest were able to touch the ark and carry the ark and not be harmed. The high priest were not destroyed or harmed because of the power of God. Jesus being our high priest, he enables us to be able to communicate with God the Father, and he enables us to be able to be listened to and heard by God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's kind of hard to explain, but just ponder that for a little bit, that whole concept It's very interesting and so true. I don't think that we really stop and take the time to consider that type of a scenario in comparison when it comes to how we live our lives and how we treat our bodies and what we do with our bodies. So your body houses the spirit of the living God. And that's just very awesome and mind-blowing really to think about So when you consider going out and doing things like the world and corrupting yourself and living filthy and all of that, you have to just stop and you have to repent for that and turn away from it and change your mind. And you need to change your mind and decide who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the Lord your God or are you going to serve the other God? which is Satan. You can only serve one or the other. You cannot serve both. It doesn't work that way. I know it feels like it does some days. And I do believe in the grace of God. 
but I don't believe in the hyper grace message. The hyper grace message basically is this picture of an all loving God who doesn't really mind our sin. It's no big deal. We're under grace, so we could just do whatever we want. Basically, that's kind of in a nutshell what the hyper grace message teaches. Well, it's true that we're under grace and it's true we will be forgiven, but we can't sit there and abuse the privileges of the grace that God has given us. And the hyper grace message to me is abusing just that. So I want you to think about these things. I hope this message has blessed you and touched you. Please share it everywhere so other people can be blessed. And I do need your help sharing the video so people will be reached with the truth. So please take the time if you could and share my videos on your Google page, your Facebook pages, Facebook groups, MeWe, wherever. Share the videos all over the place to the best of your ability and help spread the truth. God bless you and have a lovely, lovely week in Christ, not just this week, but every week to come. And remember that he loves you very, very much. So now hopefully you can see how important it really is for us to take our salvation seriously and as the vessels of the living God today to live our lives in obedience to God and to submit to his will and to surrender our lives to him. After all, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, it is no longer our lives. You were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'd like you to think about that. And I'm going to think about it too, as I go through each and every day when I'm tempted to not obey or when I'm tempted to sin, I'm going to try to remember that whole arc comparison, you know, to our bodies, how our body is now like the ark of God. It houses the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the living God. So I hope that this message has blessed you. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to please like this video, share this video all over the place so other people will be blessed. And please consider giving a gift to help support the Lin Oz ministry and to help me continue to put out these videos to bless people. I reach people all over the entire world. I get emails and praise reports from all over the place, Africa, Australia, um, everywhere. So um, that's awesome. And that's what it's all about. Thanks again. God bless you.